Hello everyone, this is Daniel, and um, anyway, I'm going to be giving you um, some preaching about, you know, how you're actually the opposite, or most likely going to be the opposite in heaven than you are on earth. Let me tell you differently. Um, Jesus gave these um, very cool, um, what do you call them? Jesus gave these cool um, parables and um, even um, the, ways you, the ways you should be, or um, like for the happy, are the happy people who are going to be sad, you know. So in Matthew chapter 5, in the beginning, he stated that, um, you know, <clears throat> blessed are the poor, blessed are um, the poor, for the kingdom of heavens will be theirs, so, uh, you know. Not poor, but you know. What was the first one? Oh my goodness. I... But yeah, um, he said, um, you know, blessed are those who are persecuted for the kingdom of heavens are, the kingdom of heaven is going to be theirs. Um, blessed are those um, who mourn, those who will be comforted, and then there's the blessed who, who are th those who are poor. Now, the Bible does um, say differently in every other um version, but, um, in my version, I'm going to say this, um, because these, um, you know, these, um, themes that, um, Jesus is talking about is that we are supposed to be either poor in spirit, which means we're supposed to be humble, and then we'll be proud in heaven, but, honestly, we will be, quite unfortunately, the opposite of what we are today. Because if we're all really happy and joyful and fat and um, rich and eating a ham off the bone and um, really, you know, uh, prosperous and drunk and all that, we'll be in hell. But if we're really upset and sad and we want justice and... Um, but we're not getting any. Not the people that want justice in a sinful way, but really, we feel that we need justice. Um, and we're not getting any. And those who are very poor in spirit and poor in wealth and um, very much um, not known in the world and the people that are very weak and all that in faith and all that. People that are struggling and um, people that are that are, you know, sinners, but th they don't want to sin anymore. The people that are with a really upset life, but they don't know what to do, they don't know where to turn. And these people that are um, weak in faith, like I said, but also they um, only want to talk to God about their struggles, and they talk about God in a really beautiful way, but they don't know how to speak to people, they don't know what speeches are. These people are going to be the greatest in heaven because if, you, if the people are very weak in speech, um, like Moses was, or maybe David was having a struggle with his own life, um, because um, people would um, persecute him. Let me tell you what about David, because people say, oh, David was a rich guy, he was very happy, he was prosperous. Well. Let me tell you something. He was sort of wealthy. He had the wealth of Israel. He did not personally own it to himself, all of it. All of it. Yes, he was a king, but he was a king of all the people. So, rather unfortunately, all of his psalms, except for a few of them, were psalms of Lord, I want justice. Defeat these enemies. Destroy them. Lord, I'm more. I'm mournful. I feel like I've been, you know, whatever, whatever, not. And he lists all things like um, he feels like he's writhing. He feels like he's um, 
like uh, torn up from the inside. He feels like um, his bones are not working because of all the people trying to persecute him. David has a re David has actually had a really rough life. Solomon, well, when he was at his greatest moments, he was actually at his slowest moments. When he was at his greatest wisdom, he was actually going at his lowest part of his life and lowest part of humanity's. I mean, when Solomon was as great in wisdom, then he became the least of humanity in all the history of the world because his wisdom brought him the great shape and shame that anyone has ever known. And unfortunately, when he was in a very miserable, broken state, and when he was no longer king, or at least when Solomon was king, when, when someone else was no longer king, he was actually at his best, and he was just, you know, like I said, waiting for heaven, and just average. David was not average. He was the um, head guy of Jesus, because he was so miserable and so broken, yet he was a king, but that does not make him, you know, happier, it made him more miserable. And then there's, a, there's a, also the fat, prosperous guy in Rome who was eating hams off of bones and um, eating jello and sugar and fruit and all kinds of meat, um, including like uh, shrimp and crayfish and um, all the fish on the, on the bottom of the, of the ocean and um, eating all kinds of um, cheese and... Um, wine. That guy is the least of God. And he's at the bottom of hell because of how happy he was and so prosperous he was. He got the really unexpected um, rude awakening when he went to hell. Jesus was another example of how miserable he was because of all the people sinning. And he wanted people to really started a new faith and he wanted to you know all these is what I do was um instead of um you know helping people believe in his faith which he wanted to do he wanted to get a new generation of people to completely change their in their new ways but all he had to do and the most painful thing he had to do was die on the cross, the most painful death, and be whipped until he was basically deformed. And you could see that he was all strings of skin. He was in tethers, so like uh, his skin was literally, um, like you know, torn clothing and um, bad, um, bad-looking rags. He, was, he looked like um, very much torn rags. And the, and the funny thing is, um, he died on the cross, and then when he, um, when the guy put a spear through his, um, abdomen, the, um, I think it was the right side, um, they found out that there was water, and they realized, oh, prophecy foretold that, um, water was going to come out, and that means he was going to be dead. Because people wanted him to be king, everyone wanted him to be king, but instead, he was just this loner guy that was um, quite interesting, like in an interesting way, was only just there to change the way people see the world and see religion and see faith. And he changed people from Jewish to Christianity um, in a slow moment. But you know, He was at its, at its greatest, at his least. Like, you know, he got baptized and got the Holy Spirit. But then he went to the wilderness because he was at his least. But then he was at his greatest again when he was in the wilderness. But then, later on, when he was at his least, he was at his greatest when he was when he died on the cross for his sins.
guys, this world, if you want to go to heaven, it's not that you have to sin. You have to be the opposite of the world in value. Because if anyone is to be really sad and upset, but not commit suicide, if they're not treated like kings, if they're really homeless and hopeless situations, Jesus will come to you. He will turn your life around bit by bit until you go to heaven. He did not come for the rich people. He did not come for the happy pet. He did not come for the happy people. He did not come for people who really think they are really religious. No. Jesus came for those who are absolutely broken and knew they needed Jesus. For the sinner, for the lost, for the confused, for the king who, quite, quite cons consequently, you know, instead of, um, you know, he, he made, he, he basically made miracles only for those who are in emergency, emergency situations. Jesus was there for those who were humble, poor, you know, thirsty for justice, um, you know, he came for those who are hungry, he came for those who are, um, dying, he came for everyone that was really, you know, in hopeless situations, like I said. This is the opposite of what you think. The Bible is no real, I mean, it's a study tool, but really, it is to, the Bible um, is not, not just one thing. It is also basically um, showing what your life is like. It shows you where you are with God in line and what, how good you are, or not really how good you are, but really how close you are to Jesus. No one is good. When you realize that no one is good, and when you are really singing, sinning so much, then you know that you'll need Jesus to get rid of your sins. And you know, no one's going to be perfect no matter where they are in life. Nobody, nobody's going to be perfect. And if someone says, well, we're going to be without sin, they're a liar. Because every single person has sin, no matter where they are in, Jesus, in the life of Jesus. Everyone is broken. But some of them realize, oh, I need Jesus. But some of the others think, well, I'm okay in life. And the others think, what well, prosperous, prosperous life I've had. You know, the fast man with a hand bone in his hand thinking, I've just been so happy in my whole entire life. But instead, they'll be at the bottom of hell. And then there's also the suicidal that really they've been treated like kings for, from the world. They've been really supported by the whole world, yet they're at the bottom of hell too. The more you're supported by the worldly, the more, the close, the more you'll be at the bottom of hell. But the less you've been supported by the worldly, you know, the higher you'll be in heaven, the higher ranking you'll be in heaven. So, my piece of advice, flee from the world. Do not be part of the world. Come to Jesus. And be, if you're rich, sell all of your um, possessions. If you're poor, then keep your poorness. Keep yourself, be, make, your show, make, make sure that you stay poor. If you're fat, maybe you should um, not starve yourself. But, uh, but recognize um, either if that's for a reason, maybe you're cursed. Maybe you should deal with something with God. I don't know. And if you're, um, if you're American, then go to places like um, Haiti. If you're American, go to Haiti. 
If you're American, go to Africa. And if you really are an atheist um, in America, go to Ghana, where people are very spiritual and understand what they're really doing in Africa. If you think you're the best Christian in America, go to China and see how they're persecuted and see how they're thriving with their Christianity even though they're the most broken people in the world. I mean, if you're Russian, maybe you should um, go to Africa to see how faithful, faithful they are to God instead of really judging everyone else. If you are uh, European, maybe you should know that your country is falling apart instead of going to Europe Maybe you should go to places like Africa. If you're a rich person in Japan, maybe you should go to Haiti instead. See what it's like to be not um, rich anymore. If you're the richest person in the world, go to Haiti. And sell all of your possessions and go to Haiti. All of these things will prove that you're a godly person. Because unless you flee from the world and hate the world and 100% to hate the world and 100% love Jesus, you will perish. But I'm not sending this message to you because you're listening. Now, I'm just saying it this to you because this is what the Bible says. Now, I don't know how many people are going to listen to this, but, you know, I'd rather see one person listen, at least one person listen to this, and spread the whole whole news, uh, hold the a whole gospel to the people, rather than just, you know, not really listening at all. You know, the Bible is the only truth. And once you live on the world, once you become the opposite of the world, You'll be in heaven. Heaven is the opposite of the world, okay? Alright, I'll be done now, okay? Bye.